Welcome back to PlayStation Livecast. I'm here with David Stenton, the producer on Homefront The Revolution, coming to PS4. David, tell me, uh, what made Crytek want to take on Homefront? So one of the things that I think really appealed to Crytek back when they acquired the rights in 2012 was the premise of the original game was really strong. So the idea of that kind of dystopian, near future, occupied USA, um, you know, that kind of Orwellian, um, what, and also the turning that kind of established narrative of kind of a special forces soldier, globe trotting, fighting for the paycheck, it's really turning that established narrative on its head and people fighting in their own backyards um, and fighting for the land and fighting for liberty. So the, uh, the first home front, a little bit more of a corridor shooter, but I'm really interested in the approach that you guys are taking here with Homefront The Revolution. Much more open world, a lot of options uh, available to the player. Tell me a little bit about what, that, what that's like. So we at Crytek are really keen on kind of getting back to our own DNA. If you remember kind of games like Far Cry and Crisis, those kind of free roam sandbox first person shooters. And with Homefront, it's definitely an opportunity for us to kind of push that further to get back to our heritage. And so to that end, we're setting the game in this free roam Philadelphia. Um, and so we're really kind of using the latest version of CryEngine to bring this free roam Philadelphia to life. And um, that's, you know, a really uh, kind of strong difference, I think, uh, compared to the previous game. Now we're seeing some gameplay footage here, I presume. It almost looks like a cinematic. Tell me a little bit about, obviously, Crytek, so, so strong on the technical side. Now you've got PS4, you've got a new generation of hardware on the console side. Tell me about how you guys are evolving CryEngine to handle Homefront the Revolution. Yeah, so we're using the absolute bleeding edge version of CryEngine. And we've got quite a sizable R&D team at the Nottingham studio where the majority of Homefront is being developed. Um, and we're working on uh, new features such as real-time day-night cycles, real-time weather, we're really pushing the AI systems. So within this free roam sandbox Philadelphia, we're really kind of pushing the civilian AI and the, the AI of the KPA, the Korean People's Army, who are the occupying force. So it's very much about kind of setting up this sandbox and allowing the players to kind of sit back and observe the game systems at play. And within this context of a resistance fighter, choosing, the, choosing your opportunity to, to strike and really kind of put we're really pushing CryEngine uh, to do, deliver that vision. And we're seeing that, that visual fidelity here on display. We're watching uh, this open world vision of Philadelphia. Tell me a little bit about the backstory. Get us caught up a little bit. Obviously, uh, Philadelphia here being occupied by a superior force. Yeah, so the year is 2029. So it's set four years after the events of the first game. And this is a mature occupation. So the KPA are in complete control of the United States. As I mentioned, the game set is in Philadelphia, and we kind of chose Philadelphia because it's a really iconic location. It's iconic because it's the birthplace of independence. There were several kind of really uh, iconic independence landmarks, Independence Hall, it was the signing of the Declaration, obviously, houses the Liberty Bell. So what better place to set home front the revolution than Philadelphia? And it's really, a, like I mentioned, it's a dystopian world, and I think the KPA of choosing Philadelphia as their capital city of the occupied United States really shows within this fiction how far America have fallen and how far the how dominant the KPR are within this within this game world. Now I know uh, Homefront: The Revolution it has this open world. It's definitely more of a hit and run approach. It's not, you know, the first title had more of a corridor shooter mentality. So here we're seeing some of that. It looks like throwing a brick to take out a camera. Talk a little bit about, this is a very different approach for this IP. Talk a little bit about just the tools at your disposal. I mean, this is very interesting interactivity. Yeah, so we're this game world that we're creating, this occupied Philadelphia, it's inherently a kind of an asymmetric setup. You've got the KPA that are in complete control. They're using far superior technology, far superior firepower. They've got drone technology, watchtowers, checkpoints, all of the kind of the trappings of occupation. And the, the US civilians, the, the, every, the everyday guys, they've really got nothing. They're kind of scavenging, just trying to get by. Their food's rationed, power's rationed. So within that kind of asymmetric setup, how would you strike back? You know, if you, as an everyday guy, how would you push back against such a, 
an overwhelming superior force. And to that end, you have to use guerrilla tactics. It's the only way that you can strike back, otherwise you'd be completely crushed. So in Home Front the Revolution, we're really pushing guerrilla warfare. It's really this, the central pillar of the gameplay. And so to that end, we kind of saw in the, in the footage that you're using guerrilla toolkit items. It's very much about scavenging everyday items and combining them in interesting ways. So we've got items like chemicals, batteries, containers, explosives. And you combine these to create different guerrilla toolkit items. So, for example, you can create a radio-controlled car, maybe use that to scout out an enemy location. You can create an improvised explosive device, and maybe you place that on a road to destroy a passing convoy. So your guerrilla toolkit is really the key to push back against the KPA. It's one of the key tools at your disposal. I, one of the things, seeing just this footage for the first time, it's so interesting to me is, you know, the outdoor environments are, are large, but I mean the incredible density on detail inside. I mean, this is, these interior environments look fantastic. But I also want to point out this cell phone seems to be a very pivotal uh, just tool for, for the revolution here. Talk a little bit about how this factors in. I, it looks like there's augmented reality. Talk, talk a little bit about that. So the cell phone is a stolen, a KPA cell phone. So as part of the fiction, okay. you know, the everyday US citizens, they aren't allowed That's to kind of access station. technology like that. So when you're in the resistance in, within this Philadelphia, you've got access to this kind of stolen smartphone. And that's augmented with various resistance apps. So you can use it to things like access the world map, access your mission tracker. So because it's a free roam sandbox game, you've got multiple available missions on the go. You've got a camera so you can scout out enemy locations ahead of time. You can tag KPA enemies and seekers. And then kind of later in the game, as the technology evolves and as your kind of capabilities evolve, you can use that to subvert KPA technology. So this is kind of one of the interesting things that we're doing with the progression in the game. Early on, you're very much under the boot of the KPA. Your, your tools available are things like bricks and bottles, and you're smashing CTV cameras, using bolt cutters to get through padlocks, things like that. Later on in the game, you're very much using and subverting the KPA technology, which is where a lot of the smartphone functionality comes in. Now, uh, we're almost out of time, but I do want to flag, I see like, you know, these these call-outs uh, for other, what I assume, are, are teammates here. Tell, tell me a little bit, is that a multiplayer element? Or? Yeah, so at E3, we're announcing that we're doing four-player co-op. This objective yeah. that we're seeing here, attacking the police station, is indicative. It's kind of, it's a single-player objective. Perfect. It's also an objective that you can tackle within the multiplayer co-op game mode. So here we're demonstrating how you and three friends can kind of team up to tackle these kinds of sandbox objectives within the open world and each character kind of taking on their own role it's really up to you as to how you tackle these objectives as a resistance cell very very interesting stuff that's home front the revolution when can we look forward to playing this on ps4 so it'll playstation